and welcome to ITPro.TV. My name is Joe Peacock and I'm going to be taking you through an introduction to your ITIL Intermediate. So let's take a look then at our first slide here coming up and we have our introduction to our intermediate class and exactly what content is going to be found in this upcoming intermediate class. You will see what we will cover is an introduction to the class followed by the principles and the processes of the life cycle phase. Then we'll take a look at organizing for that life cycle phase and also the technology considerations, especially those that we need when we're implementing the phase itself. Then we'll take a look at the challenges and the critical success factors and all of the risks that are associated with that particular life cycle phase. And most importantly, of course, for you is that preparation for the exam that's going to be coming up when you have completed your class. Okay, so let me take a look now then at how we're going to approach this particular intermediate class. We're going to be doing some presentation work. Obviously, you're going to be watching us on screen, um, both myself and my colleagues, and we're going to be taking you through the course materials for the class. And then there are going to be some discussions and some exercises that are going to be based primarily in our chat rooms and also in our forums as well. And we're also available if you want to undertake any of the assessments, then please feel free to come back to us via the forums and we will be able to help you out in any way we can. Also provided in the course material which is available for you to download are mock tests or exams if you prefer to use that word and we will be conducting a run through of that mock exam for you. Okay. So where are we then at ITIL intermediate level. Well, you'll see in using Bloom's taxonomy that we are actually at level four analyzing. In other words, we've done at foundation level, we've done the remembering and the understanding of those concepts within ITIL, and we're actually moving through applying those concepts to analyzing those concepts and being able to apply the ITIL processes and also the concepts at it at a real world level, in a real world situation. Okay. So where does ITIL come from then? Well, let me give you a little bit of a background. It's actually owned by a company called Axelos, and it was first published in the mid-1980s by the UK government. And the Office of Government Commerce uh, owned ITIL for a very, very long time, and we developed ITIL right the way back from the 1980s, through its version 2 in the 1990s, mid-1990s, to version 3, which was released in 2007, and then there was an update to version 3 in 2011, which is exactly where we are right now. It is copyrighted, it is trademark protected, it's a framework for managing services, and as such it is a flexible framework, a framework that we would expect any organization to adopt as a framework, but then to adapt it to suit your needs. Okay. ITIL was born right the way back in the 1980s out of a desire to be able to demonstrate value for money and efficiency for the use of taxpayers money within the UK. Way back in the 1980s these things started appearing on desks and quite frankly we didn't know how to manage these in an unbiased, in an impartial and in an efficient and effective way. And thus ITIL was born and ITIL was born from a group of industry experts that went out into the big wide world and analyzed various organizations from a various different industry sectors, not just government, but we're talking finance, we're talking retail, etc. And they came back with a set of best practices. Best practices that they observed in the real world for managing our IT services. And thus, we have ITIL. And as I've already said, we've had subsequent re revisions, and now we're up to version 3, 2011. So, we work on the understanding that we have a life to every single service. And we start off with a concept in service strategy, and then we 
take that concept and we design it and then we develop it and we deploy it as a service into a live environment which is where we operate and where we maintain it and we continually seek to ensure that we are aligned with the needs of the organization in CSI. So you're attending this class because you probably want to achieve an ITIL intermediate qualification. Okay. So you can see that if we were to start off right at the very, very top, you'll see where I am. I am an accredited ITIL trainer working with an accredited training organization. I'm also an accredited examiner and proctor or invigilator for these exams and work very, very closely with the official ITIL accreditor and also Axelos who owns the ITIL copyright. Now, in terms of ITIL, where can you go with your qualification level? Well, we start off with ITIL Foundation, and ITIL Foundation is a, would traditionally be a three-day classroom experience where we learn the foundations of ITIL. And we learn all the terminology and all of the definitions to that terminology. There's roughly around about 75 that we learn within the ITIL Foundation class. And then as we move through, we can either take an ITIL practitioner class, which can be taken at any point in time throughout the progression of your career within ITIL, because ITIL practitioner focuses on the implementation of ITIL. Okay. Whereas if we take a look at the more advanced intermediate classes, you are at this moment um, in a life cycle module. And those life cycle modules consist of service strategy, service design, service transition, service operation, and continual service improvement. And that's where we focus on those life cycles that we've just looked at previously. Okay, and on the right hand side then we have our capability modules and these capability modules really focus on specific areas within ITIL such as um, RCV which focuses on release control and validation. Okay. And these classes, you will notice that every single one of these classes has got a score right beside each one. So we've got a number two for ITIL Foundation and we've got a three for Lifecycle Modules and we've got a four for our capability modules. Now, what we need to do is ensure that we have achieved a minimum of 15 credits at both either life cycle or capability module level in order to be able to qualify to sit the managing across the life cycle class and therefore subsequently the test that goes along with that class. So we need to take two from the ITIL foundation. That's a prerequisite. We have to do the foundation. And then we need to add in another 15 scores from either, as I've said, the life cycle or the capability stream. Now you can interchange. You can mix and match. You do not have to stick to one stream or the other. Once you've got that 17 in total scores that are needed to be able to sit managing across the life cycle. You're perfectly able to sit that life cycle class and to be able to take that test afterwards. And as soon as you've taken that test, you will be awarded those five credits, which will mean that you have achieved ITIL Expert. Now, ITIL Expert is allocated as soon as you have passed the Managing Across the Life Cycle test and have achieved 22 credits. Both of those must happen in order for you to achieve ITIL Expert. Now, we have the ITIL Master qualification, and the ITIL Master is a completely different beast. The ITIL Master is a two-year qualification, and during that two years, you will be expected to submit various white papers on specific topics within the ITIL qualification scheme. So these could be topics on activities within ITIL, these could be topics on processes within ITIL, these could be topics on implementation of various aspects of ITIL. But you will be required to sit a number of white papers or submit a number of white papers over the period of two years. 
at the end of those two years, once you have submitted the prerequisite white papers, then you will be asked to attend a panel interview. And during that panel interview, you will be assessed not only on your white papers, but also on your experience within the IT service management arena. And at the end of that panel interview, then if successful, you will be awarded the status of ITIL master. So the qualification scheme, I'm going to take this back now to Bloom's taxonomy then and just very, very quickly look at the fact that in ITIL Foundation, and I know that I've already covered this on a previous slide, that we just looked at understanding, understanding the terminology and the concepts of ITIL Foundation. And then in the life cycle modules, we're looking at implementing those processes contained within ITIL. And in capability, we're looking at actually undertaking those those processes and managing those processes. Whereas managing across the life cycle, this is for senior management. This is at CIO level and at senior management level. And in MALC, as we like to abbreviate it to, you're concerned with leading IT service management. So I mentioned right at the very beginning of all of this that we had a test to go along with every single life cycle phase. And there is. And we will be conducting a session to go over this particular test, or at least a sample of these tests, just to give you some preparation for the actual test itself. So your test is conducted online. It's conducted virtually. It is an eight multiple choice question test. Okay? It's complex multiple choice. You get an hour and a half for this particular test. And with every single question, you will be given a scenario and then you will be given four possible options, four possible answers for the question that is posed along with that scenario. You get five points for the best fit answer. Now, it mentions up there the most correct. I always call it the best fit because every single question asks, what is the best answer given the scenario and given the question. Don't be alarmed if you don't see an answer that you think is 100% correct because the question is asking you for the best fit. And for that best fit, you're going to get five points. For the next best fit, you're going to get three. For the next one, which we'd consider to be the least correct, you're going to get one. And for the next one, you're going to get a zero. Now, it mentions up on that slide there that the next one is zero marks for incorrect. We like to call that in the industry, us in the know, we call that the distractor. And we call it the distractor for a reason, because it distracts. And quite often, what you will find is with your distractor, a lot of the words and the terminology that are taken straight out of the ITIL book, straight out of the publications, and are input into that zero pointer because it's there to distract. And it sounds great. But more often than not, that distractor has absolutely no relevance to the scenario or to the question. So you have to be incredibly careful with that. It's so easy to be distracted. Okay. You have to get 28 out of a possible 40 in order to be able to pass and achieve accreditation at any life cycle test. Okay. If English is not your first language, you are allowed a paper dictionary, but you will be asked to show that to the proctor at the time that you take your test. And as I've already said, you have to have an ITIL foundation in version 3 or version 3 2011 or an ITIL version 2 foundation bridge to version 3. I will be very, very honest with you. There are not that many people that have attained the version 2 to version 3 bridge. And most people will have the version 3 or 2011, uh, 2011 sorry, ITIL foundation certificate. You will be required to upload that certificate to the examining board prior to sitting your life cycle test. So be prepared with that. You will need to have it to hand and saved as a PDF as well. So 
when we come to the end of every single life cycle class, we will be going over, and this one's no exception, we'll be going over a sample test for you. And during those sample tests, I'll be giving you lots of hints and tips on how to select that best fit possible answer, and also how to ensure that you read the full question, how to relax, and to make sure that you approach it with an open mind, but you consider relevance in every single answer. Ultimately, we want to get you past the test just as much as you want to achieve that accreditation. So, just to sum up, what we will be doing over the next few shows is encouraging you to take your ITIL Lifecycle Intermediate classes and feel free to join us in the forums for any questions that you may have.